Hello and welcome back. We have got another Sage Energy install going on here. As you can see, we've got our gateway and whole home backup. We've got our 16 kilowatt hours of storage and our inverter here. So this allows for integration of EV charge points, heat pumps, and all the super cool, clever things that Sage Energy can do inside their ecosystem. This one had an existing EV charge point. You can see we've got our pen fault detection unit down under this little section of trunk in here. It was living outdoors. We're gonna have a look at all of that. We're gonna go up onto the roof, see how these panels have been installed and talk about how this kit works and what it can do. Just to say right at the start of this video, if you're a customer looking for PV, battery storage and EV charge points, please do get in touch with us. There'll be a link in the description alongside wherever you're watching this. We really do appreciate all the interaction around that. So if you've got a specific need in your home, please do get in touch and I'd be happy to pop something over for you to consider. In the meantime, let's move on with this install and see how all of this came to be. Okay, so you can see we've got our stack down here. This is a six kilowatt inverter with two eight kilowatt hour modules underneath it. And we've got two PV strings running into this, one of three panels roughly pointing east and one of seven panels roughly pointing south. It's not quite bang on that, but near enough. We've got our cables running in here, which is the EV charge point, which I'll show you outside. And also the PV Ultra, which is taking two strings up to those roofs with our Trina bifacial panels. Over on this side, we've opted for some 150 by 150 trunking. Now that allows us to sit the gateway directly on top of it. We've left the glands in the gateway through into the trunking, so they are all still glanded as the cables ent enter into there. It just allows for some extra security as the cables enter and exit and we know that there's going to be no movement on those conductors inside the gateway we've got our isolation points here one is doing both of those two strings with one array only been relatively small at three panels we didn't see the harm in isolating the whole roof system from one central point and that's the versatility that the imo range of isolators gives us this is the dc pv2 so we can isolate those two strings combined in the same isolator. We've got our Proteus IP67 rotary isolator. This is 63 amp rated, although it is only a six kilowatt inverter. There's just so much more wiring room in there. It's an absolute no brainer. So we might as well utilize that. We've got the pen fault detection consumer unit down here that was existing to the customer that install. And again, we brought that inside. It was living under the meter cabinet. And really that is just so it's out the elements and it's with everything else for if there is any isolations that are needed. We've got our sub main coming down here, which is our 25 mil five core. And again, that's bringing the grid feed into the gateway and returning power back to the house loads in the consumer unit. Down the side here, you can see we've got all of our connections inside the end of the inverter. So if you've watched the channel before, you will know that your PV inputs, your AC supply, all your data connections, the link between the side and star and the gateway, all go into that side of the inverter. The only difference on this one is there's only two MPPTs because it is a six kilowatt inverter. In the gateway itself, which is what gives us our backup function, again, this is all very similar to what you might have seen on other videos. So we've got our grid feed coming in, which is your main metered supply. That then blends into the contactors and clever electronics in here to merge the PV slash battery system. So that's our SIG and star. We've also got our EV charger on here and we've got the Tiger hub powered from there as well. Now that um, common bus bar in there does allow for different equipment to be connected. However, Sage Energy prefer these to be retained for inverters. So inverter one, two and three. However, we're only gonna have one stack on here and it's just the same as taking our feeds from the consumer unit as long as you make sure you've got adequate circuit protection for the equipment that you're connecting as we have here. The backup part is where the house loads are connected into. So any of these circuits down here will retain supply on grid loss through the uh, side and star and the PV generation. We've also got our AC SPD on there as well. So if there's a power cut, <coughs> all of these are kept running. So long as there's sufficient battery um, storage levels remaining, and also you can have solar generation carrying on as well to keep you going off grid for longer periods. Or if there is a grid connection, then all of the clever stuff within the Sage and Star ecosystem and the app start doing its thing for you to retain, uh, just use solar power for your house loads. Any extra can go into the battery. Any extra on that can export to the grid. Or you can even choose to export all of your solar, um, utilize grid consumption, utilize your battery storage. All of this stuff can happen. And there is the really useful AI modes as well which Sage Energy have just expanded to include three different levels with that. So a really aggressive energy market tariff playing game. 
kind of mid level and then the super light metal which level which is really just for self consumption uh, so that aspect is in there too you've got your schematic which shows the neutral earth bond here and it's really important as installers if you fit in these there is a little earth terminal roughly somewhere here and you need to make sure you link that to the common earth bar unless you were using a totally independent earthing system when you are islanding and that's so you don't end up with voltages on your earthing systems um, we've got all of our labels up here so you can see we're labeled up for the batteries and all of the uh, equipment so we've got all of the isolation points noted same for outside we'll go and have a look down the side of the house and see where everything is there and take a jump up to the roof and see what we've got up there as well so you can see up on the roof nice and sunny over uh, in driffield this one's very local to us and we're popping three panels in landscape on this roof they would have just fit in portrait but we would be edging a bit close to this ridge line so we've just dropped them down two in portrait sorry two in landscape at the bottom here and then one up the top there so you can see we've got our four hooks in for this top panel and then we have got eight hooks in for these bottom two and that is just because of the landscape orientation of the panels uh, you need a few more hooking and railing points to secure them down and this is the van der Volk system so you can see here the guys have ground out the tile so we've got the hook covered over and it's laid back flat but also most importantly there's a gap underneath that hook as well so when it's flexing in the wind it's not pressing down on the tile underneath and going to crack it because in the wind there's quite a lot of up and down force on these panels and it's what can happen if your hooks don't sit proud of the tile below is over time that constant up and down pressure can crack these tiles and then you get leaks so it's really important that you do allow that space and the Volk mounting system is really good in helping achieve that it's very flexible so we can make sure we're satisfying that requirement if we scoot around this side so you can see Nathan's just setting out for our next row of hooks and the rail to go on here we've got this bottom rail in all ready for the guys to work from same principle so the hooks are sat off the tiles so you've got this little gap in here so we're not going to have any compression onto the tile below ground out above so we've got that tile above sat flat no insects can get back in and this is going to have four panels in portrait and then another three above it again it's a tight roof space this one it's not because it's a weird hip shaped roof there's not a lot of roof real estate to work with um, so we're getting on what we can the guys are just cleaning off a bit of the moss get these rails on and then we can look towards putting some panels on same principle you can see nathan's popped that uh, out of the way there so we're then going to lift the tile out screw the hook down into the rafter grind out the shape to go back over the tile pop it all back together and then we can load the panels on this is the existing ev charger that we were talking about that was cabled all the way along to under the meter cabinet where that pen fault detection rcd box was living we've removed that so we can make use of the cable run for our sub main down to the garage so that now comes along there punches through behind the gate into the gateway and then returns power back to uh, some henley blocks that are inside the meter cabinet we'll have a look at that in a minute and goes back into the house the ev charger now punches through and we've dropped our pv ultra down the back of this drain pipe to try and keep it super discreet and out of sight i think the guy's done a really good job with that it's always tricky trying to hide your cable runs and then we've got our earth electrode which comes out in this conduit outlet box and then drops down into this little inspection uh, pit here we're struggling for space there was no real room to put a big old grate in so we figured that was the best use of the space available uh, to allow access for maintenance and stuff so that's that and all these holes as you can see sealed with silicon so no insects no moisture nothing is going to get in there the guys are just on we're in all that up as we speak and then down here we've got our bending radius it looks a bit tighter than it is and this is um lsoh or your the low smoke fume cable and xlpe so it's a little bit thinner than your normal pvc SWA, so you can get a bit of a tighter bending radius i'll get a meat cab key and show you in there in a minute but that's kind of that running along back there and then into the garage on a nice swooped angle and again they've silicon sealed that hole up so no moisture or insects are getting in there so you can see here we've got our switch fuse and this has been labeled up by the guys this basically takes the grid feed down to the garage area um, through our steel wire armor as you can see here we've utilized what was an existing hole we've sealed it in a little bit better than it was prior with a consumer unit underneath it and then the supply comes back and we drop those out then through these tails into the 
Henley blocks, which then run off to the house consumer unit in the house. And our grid feed comes in through the meter, into the switch fuse, runs through the main switch and switch, through this steel wire armor, off to the gateway, and then back through. We've done this lots before. Um, that obviously fills up the meter box, but it is what it is. And it's removed the um, external EV consumer unit, which you can see was here, fixings are there. I forgot to get some pictures before, but the guys have got rid of that. Nice bending radius on this. So it looks sharper than it is because of the way it's coming into the meter cab, but it's um, it's a nice swoop coming in. It's carefully drops down and bends up nice and smooth in and away. And I think that's a good result in what are quite difficult spaces to work with. But as I've said, lots of these are shared areas that we do need to make the best use of. As long as there's room left for the metering company to come in and make changes to this, which there is, they've got ample space to the side here if they need to shuffle things around. And also a room for the service head to be replaced if something goes wrong there. We've kind of used what would be termed as the consumer unit space and switch fuse space. If you look on some of the backboard diagrams that used to exist and be quite commonplace, that is what they were defined for. Um, and why these things kind of exist, we need to accept that we've got things like that to do. And otherwise, this becomes near on impossible for taking submains down for gateways and you're left with having a gateway outside, which is not to be desired. So we can show you up on the roof now, and this is again with the Vanderbalk rail and the hooks mounting and the Pesfix bird guard. These are combined with the Trina bifacial panels and these have both a top and underside generation point obviously on a roof they're not going to see a lot of reflective light however there will be some and the price point on these bifacial panels is consistent with single sided panels and these are still dual glass end type as well you can see there the guys have kept the spacings for the clamps going down onto those rails and it looks a little bit different with the old landscape ones when they're stacked like this because you need clamping points in a couple of different places so that top panel looks like it's got three clamps on but it's actually just to facilitate the panel underneath its end clamp as well. You can see on those, they compress down onto the panels and securely hold them in place against those rails. So when the wind's blowing on and underneath these, they are going absolutely nowhere. And we did sort of realize that they would fit three in portrait. However, they were very, very close to the edge of that ridge. And we just didn't want to risk getting too close on that one. The wind uplift. Uh, is no joke and if it just takes one wrong gust to start causing you a problem so we set these down into landscape and they'll still produce quite happily in that um, elevation and orientation and they should be good to go this is roughly west facing and again they are optimized so we've got our tiger optimizers underneath there that's to facilitate the rapid shutdown function also to give panel by panel level monitoring and equally if there is any kind of shading or something that affects the array and we need to remember that's through all seasons when the sun's lower in the sky um, sometimes some of your neighboring properties that you think might not cause you an issue with shading can actually do so and then you have the different rates of degradation amongst the panels themselves over the 25 years and those optimizers just blend those out it's really useful as well if you need any maintenance in the future because you can pinpoint exactly where that issue is and you can see on this back roof here we've got the seven panels again the trina by facials three on that top row four on the bottom row and we've aligned these absolutely centrally with the roof we're going to fire the drone up to get some real good footage of that you can see they are flat and level all the way across amongst each other we take a lot of time care and attention in leveling these rails so they look duck pond flat from ground level you don't want wavy panels when you're looking up at these for the next 25 years and you can see the guys have got those absolutely bang on again pest fixed up so we've got no issues with any rodents getting underneath these causing us a problem and also we know that they are going to be well protected for the fullness of time from any nesting nibbling critters causing us a problem and the end caps fitted on that Vanderbilt rail just to fully tidy everything up we clean the gutters out as standard on every project leaving better than we find and you can see as we jump up with some drone footage here we can look at these panels from a really good aerial point and you can see there on this south facing roof how it was edging towards that ridge line we've just managed to keep our distance off it it was ever closer still on the other hipped roof if we had taken a similar approach so that's why we swung those ones around and you get a bit more of a better indication of that from this aerial shot here 
And you can see again, dead centre onto the roof and that side of the array, basically in the Jenny array, you're roughly one and a half kilowatts. And the other side with those seven panels will be getting up towards three kilowatts. Obviously they won't be peaking at the same time because the sun moves through the sky and you can see that neighboring property there could cause us an issue with shading at certain times of the year. So the optimizers are gonna come into their own for that one. Shout out to the scaffolders who set us up a nice deck in pretty short order. So they've helped us out there as always. And Mike, Matty and Nathan have produced another incredible install for us on this installation. And I just wanted to demonstrate my piloting skills of the drone here because I thought it was an especially snazzy landing coming down onto the little patio table here for a bullseye landing all done manually, no automatic control. So there we have it, another home running on sunshine. And these are an absolute pleasure to install. Massive thanks to Matty, Nathan and Mike for doing an incredible job up on the roof and also down here in the main command control center. Um, again, as we said at the start, if you're a customer looking for one of these systems, please do get in touch. We're a small family run business. We really do try our very best to offer value, safety and performance with everything we're doing, with all of the considerations we've discussed through this video around rapid shutdown, and safety aspects on the AC side. We really do take great care and attention with that. There'll be a link in the description where you can go off and get in touch. Otherwise, if you've got any questions around this install, as always, please do drop them in below. It'd be a pleasure to try and answer them. And if you've got any wider comments around what we've done within this video as electricians, any questions you want to ask, fire them in below. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.